Hey, greetings, folks. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. Today, we're going to be unboxing the Test 4 R5. And it claims to be a cordless wet dry vacuum cleaner. Really, just a hard floor scrubber, not an actual vacuum cleaner, but we'll definitely check that out as well. As you can see, it comes in a plain brown box. Let's see what's inside. They're greeted with a manual and an Allen key. We have a handle with a push button and yep, like some sort of Molox plug. Ha! Huh. Wonder if uh, that looks familiar. It looks like a graphics card plug. We have a about a thousand milliliter solution tank. A charger. And yeah, it's good for 240 volts, so dual voltage charger. A filter of some sort. And a accessory holder. Looks like we have a base station. Interesting weavy brush pattern. Oh, that's really aggressive. Those are sharp. And a trap door. Right, so the unit comes like with all the stuff right here. Got baby bottle brush, brush roller, some packing material, and of course the unit itself. Now mine is really dusty and dirty. I think that's just because of the cardboard packing and the fact that the box got broken open. It looks like there is a roller installed, and oh, I didn't see that in the literature. It looks like it has a UV light under here. Here's a good look at the underside. You can see there's a photo sensor here. So this is probably for movement. So I bet you if it's not moving, it shuts this light off. Or if you tip it over, it shuts the slide off because UV light is dangerous to the human eye. It's hard to get all this in frame, but this is what you get in the box. A charger, charging stand, handle, one battery, a manual, the machine itself, a baby bottle brush, an extra roller, a tank, and that stand. So let's go ahead and assemble what we can. So looks like the first step here, looks like this just inserts here and there's a locking tab right there. So that's just going to insert. And yeah, battery just slides in place. The stand goes on the other side here, actually. Sorry. So you have that, that. And the solution tank has a handle, which goes up top. No power out of the box, so we'll have to charge that. Let's see what the rollers look like. That just comes off. And there's some sprayers right there. A drive, which reminds me kind of a shark. And there's just an intake path, a very wide one. So it's actually sucking out of the roller right here. It's not actually sucking in the floor. So right away we can see that it's definitely not a vacuum cleaner. This is not a nozzle, it's just a cover for the nozzle. So presumably, yeah, there's really no place for it to suck except for this little narrow path right here, possibly. The tanks, ah, you can see there is a filter installed. This is very similar to another product I recently unboxed and reviewed. So. Just looking at this, I can tell you that there's no cyclonic separation. There's, again, nothing set up in here for dry vacuuming. 
has a filter which goes directly into here. This appears to be a wet only machine. Let's plug it in. Charging start. As you can see, there's a purple LCD screen, the number, and now I see why there's a giant mute button in the front of the unit. Turn off the voice. <laughs> Turn on the voice. Oh my. Is this, this a is... Chrysler product from the 80s? <laughs> Turn off the voice. Turn on the voice. Now this machine does have an app, and the manual is very, very good in how to walk you through the app. But upon looking at this, I can't see a reason to violate my own privacy and download this app. It doesn't do that much. It turns the UV light and the voice on and off, which can be done from the machine. It also cycles through some of the other things. Again, that all can be done through physical buttons on the machine. I don't see a reason to install the app. Been about two hours later and we're at a full charge with it blinking 100 and the uh, purple RGB has stopped moving. All right, well, how loud is this thing? We have the studio microphone connected, so you can hear the real sound of the machine start up and go. Automatic mode. Powerful mode. Automatic mode. Powerful mode. Switching off. Please put machine back to the charging stand. Ah, uh, yes that talking button. Luckily you can mute it right there. I'm glad they included a giant mute button. Why it talks at all is beyond me. We're not in the future. We do not want talking appliances. At least I don't. Maybe you do. Comment below what you think of that. So there's no note in the manual what to use in the water tank. The water tank just pulls out like so. You give it a good tug and turn it upside down. So I'm gonna use some high zero solution since I know this will work on this floor and not hurt it. And it's, it's pretty uh, neutral, so I don't think it will hurt the machine. I wish they had a solution recommendation in the manual. We're gonna go ahead and run this for the first time. Let's see how the rest of this works. All right, well that's annoying. So it looks like if you start cleaning with this and you stop, you then have to bring it back to the charging stand, which is really annoying. All right, well I've brought it back to the charging stand and attempted to use it again, and it has now stopped. This is a really frustrating conundrum of this machine. So I just did this room with it and it leaves the floor, well, it's not dry, but it's almost as dry as the high zero. It's a lot drier than some of the other ones I've used. It's still relatively wet and might not be okay for use on hard floor, depending on the type of hard floor you have and the wood floor you have. The nuance of this machine is if you need to move a chair, you, uh, you lock it in the upright position but you don't hit the power button. You have to leave it on while you're doing whatever. Once you hit this power button, it must go back to the charging station. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to use it. Well, the dog has knocked this plant over. So we have this mess of wet dirt and water. Let's give it a try and see how that works. Oh wait, I have to put it back in the charging stand. <laughs> All right, now we have this mess to clean up that the dog knocked over and it's like wet dirt and water let's see how it does
Well, again, it left the floor somewhat wet, but I think this would be acceptable for real wood floor. Of course, we have synthetic here. Um, we can see we've gone down to 86%, and I did maybe a 10 by 20 areas worth of stuff. That's, that's like a big maybe. That's probably more. The roller seems all right. There does seem to be a little bit of buildup here, as I would come to expect. It's, I do like how easily all this stuff comes apart. I think that's kind of a nice thing. I will say, some of the stuff, the plastic that this cover is made out of, doesn't seem particularly high quality. The container on here did separate the hard stuff on here. Hardly any of the water was recovered, though, that I've put down, which is a little concerning on there. So it's really not sucking up a whole lot. And as I alluded to at the start of the video, that this filter would just become a trap for all things bad, nasty, and dry. And again, just doing a little area, we have about 50% coverage of the filter. I think this is kind of unacceptable, so you're not going to get very much use out of this before you have to clean it. Unfortunately. As I mentioned before, once you turn it off, it must return to its charging stand. It's completed its self-cleaning cycle. Turn off the voice. Let's see what happened here. So we're checking for, yep, it did suck water into the filter right here. So I guess that's why they're giving you an extra filter. And it, it appears to be made of some sort of material that can get wet looking at this, but it's not wet on the backside, so no water is actually going into the motor. Um, but that means you then have to take this filter out, deal with all, touch all this stuff, which is going to be grosser if you did an actual apartment or a house with this, and then let this dry overnight out of the machine. This still is going to have to be washed. That's why they give you a baby bottle brush. And now there's some solution in there. And we have a little doodad there, so... I guess they give you a strainer, but yeah, I can, I can, I can see not using the self-cleaning function with this and just cleaning it by hand. Let's wash the machine up and let everything dry out of the machine. Well, everything washes up fairly easily. There aren't really any nooks and crannies or anything to get to, but it is kind of weird that after the self-cleaning mode, you still need to wash it. Again, like I said earlier, there doesn't seem to be a reason for the self-cleaning mode other than to have it on a brochure. At the price that this machine's at, it's a fantastic value, but don't expect warranty support or parts in the future. Now I've tested quite a few of these auto mops and I'm starting to get more and more of these in my inbox. The RS5 is a decent value. Would I recommend it? Well, it's a conditional buy. I think if you could afford it, I would definitely step up to a high zero or some of the other ones on the market. However, this does seem to be the best no-name one I've seen come from overseas. It at least does as advertised, so I think that's important. I'll put a link in the description below to this if you want to check it out on Amazon. Big thank you to the company for sending it to me for an unboxing and video. No money has exchanged hands, though they really took a risk by sending me product. As you can see, I always just report what I find. Thanks for watching, folks.